So today's episode starts out inside in the house. It's uh, it was a little brisk out today. Not much I could do today outside. But I played with my new Instant Pot, which is the three quart mini. I think it's called the Duo Mini. And I'd love to hear your opinions about them. I just bought it. I've cooked uh, two chickens and two roasts, two beef roasts. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious as to what I should know more about them, so I'm going to try it. The two roasts I did came out as pot roasts, came out pretty good. Um, the two chickens cooked nicely. This last one I just did today was a um, non-frozen chicken. I think it was Purdue. I forget what brand. BJ's. Anyway, that was where we started today. Then I go to the outside and I'll show you what we did today. Out in the greenhouse, chicken coop, chicken tractor, deluxe. And it's a controller for a heating cooling concept. Um, it's a temperature controlled switch that'll operate both a heating component and a cooling component. And I just confirmed a few minutes ago because the temperatures are finally dropping that it is working. And my heat component is going to be the red heat lamp, which you should be able to see is on. The cooling component is this fan this is going to get crazy now. That little fob back here is for a wireless t temperature humidity control that I have in the house so I can see the temperature out here. This is a new toy. It's a data logger. Okay, so it just tiny slipped up over 75 degrees because of me opening the window, opening the door, moving the air around. This is a data logger for temperature. Um, and turn it around. It is made by Inkbird. It just shows you the temperature, uh, the time, but it's continually taking samplings of the temperature and storing the data. This was a small lower tech hydrometer with the 45% humidity up top and then the temperature 68 below. And you can see it gives you the high and low, so 50 and 99. And then that's just an old thermometer I've had around that I put out here just to have one more opinion. But um, the heat lamp for a brooder hanging, well, let's see. My hand is just on the bottom. It's probably about 15 to 18 inches. I put the water in can there so that that would retain a little bit of heat. But nothing gets so hot that it's looking like a fire hazard. Um, still haven't replanted, but that's tomorrow's plan. So just the fan, and comes up to this newfangled gadget. So the temperature that you see changing up top is the actual temperature at the probe. And the 75 degrees is my set temperature. Basically off of that you get to pick the temperature where things turn on, the temperature where things turn off. But it's fairly programmable. I'm going to try to show it again. So the white cord is heading over to my heat lamp. The black cord is heading over to the uh, fan. And that's what's going to control whether or not I have a fan coming on to keep air moving to keep it cooler in here. Or if I have my heat lamp coming on, which if I close the door and things settle down, the heat lamp should come on. So I'm going to do that. And for those who are wondering, my, my outlet is GFI. Doesn't make me feel overly confident, but at least I feel like there is some protection from accidental grounding. Okay. So that's, uh, 
that's the greenhouse. The clear plastic, which is not very clear, is a six mil plastic. I plan on eventually cutting this plastic here so that this section all the way along here can roll up on that piece, well there's a piece of wood underneath, roll it up, hold it, and have bungee cords coming down and under to hold it in place so that this skirt here will be open but that I can always roll the plastic back down. The tarp on the, the piece that goes over the top is attached on the side by these battens here which is then held in just by four points or four screws. That would roll off or come completely off over the top and then I have a white canvas, uh, not canvas, a, w a white tarp with tie points, six foot by eight foot. So if I come out this way six feet and overlap this way by eight feet, I believe I get from here around to the other railing. So that would give me a shade on the top, or I can turn it so that it's six foot, excuse me, eight foot this way, and the six comes this way, in which case I think if I start here, and go this way, it'll wrap over the top just a little bit for the six foot, in which case I'll bungee cord the other side and then strap it again like this, just to keep things from tearing if I can. Um, the back wall I'll eventually make so that I can open it for a chicken tractor and keep it closed now for non-brooding. What I did notice is that when I put this over here, that immediately the temperatures were not as warm. So by having it along the back wall of the house and moving it from this side to the driveway side over here in the evening when it was on the trailer with the styrofoam boards, it definitely held the temperature there much better. Um, but I'm set up for here after Thursday. I think we're gonna be out of the, out of the coldest of cold weathers. So that's it, that's the setup. Um, holding ground. In the back, I'm playing around with my water uh, system. Um, the, the tubing I have is, I think, too rigid. For certainly outdoors, now that it's cold, it's kind of stiff, so I think the surgical tubing that I've seen that Al Lumna used would probably be a better choice. Uh, as well, I think I have a little bit of a leak around the uh, spigot, so I'll probably wind up siliconing that a little bit. Alrighty, folks. Talk to you soon.